It was early morning when the group met tour guide Alok Tiwari and was transferred to the Mumbai domestic airport to board a flight to Nagpur. Upon arrival at the Nagpur airport, we were transferred to the Pride Hotel where we had two hours to freshen up before driving on to the Gandhi Seva Gram Ashram for a day visit. 33. Who was your dad here, right around? My dad would have been here uh, in the 40, early 40s. So Arun uh, would have been sitting somewhere over here eating his very tasteless meal that uh, they cooked over here. Squash? He must have talked to you about the squash story. I don't know. Yeah, he does. He I'll tell the story later on while we are sitting. But uh, this is where, uh, even now, the people who live in the ashrams, they gather over here for their meals. We undertook the education, you know, village sanitation, uh, health. Yeah. All these aspects were taken. Okay, basic education here in 1937. But Gandhi was yeah. experimenting on these aspects from the <laughs> very, very beginning, you know, even from the South African days. Yeah. Right. Uh, starting from the Phoenix settlement, then Tolstoy farm, uh, and coming back here, you know. It is a lifelong process, yeah. especially in Gujarat, you know, the founding of the Vidyapid. <laughs>
efficient uh, system. Now you see the very poor apartment uh, uh, colonies and uh, the affluent towers that are replacing them. Some of these towers are also built by the government where they have shifted uh, the apartment colonies from the city areas. So instead of the horizontal spread apartments, you see vertical apartments. You see that tower over there with the clothes hanging all over the show. That is called the slum rehabilitation tower. So the builders are told to build uh, for tiny cubicles for the slum builders. And in return of the, for that, uh, they have to they get commercially exploitable uh, building real estate space which they can sell and recover their cost and make the uh, profits. But what they very cleverly end up doing is that they gentrify the locality around the slum tower and very soon uh, those who have been rehabilitated from the slums find it impossible to live in that locality because of the standard of cost of living starts rising uh, in those localities and so after about five or six years they will either sell off the slum rehabilitation apartment they have got or rent it out or to who are migrating to the city and they will move out into the extended suburbs and establish new slum colonies. So this is how the slum rehabilitation scheme by the government has now been turned into a real estate grab for, to benefit uh, the building lobby, the building lobby, which is very, very strong uh, in metros like Mumbai all over India. And so, uh, these vertical slums will also one day uh, not be housing the beneficiaries who had uh, been relocated from their slums. All these are also a bit better of uh, slums, but they're as uh, haphazard without facilities. Because what happens is even those people who build, uh, you know, the slums start as absolute shanty towns. Then they uh, graduate to become tin shelters, then they become brick shelters, then they start piling up floors on one on top of the other, which are very unstable and uh, unsafe. Uh, but according to regulations, they are not allowed to have toilets inside or sanitation facilities in their homes. So there is no running water connection. So they are at the mercy of the slum lord who will sell them a water connection for an indecent amount of uh, money every month and the government will build public toilets for them which they have to use. So even the ones you see like the brick stories, they, are, they have no amenities, no facilities. I think that seed is not very clear to me. It's called the seeding. Taking that bridge, it saves about 45 minutes of travel time and uh, it takes you straight into downtown. It's, it's beautiful. This is really good. Yeah, this is Yeah, yeah, yeah. now we're crossing. It's almost a
the morning the group checked out toward Mumbai, then headed to Mani Bhavan for a visit of the transitional home, library, and museum of Bapu. This location has significance for being the focal point of Gandhi's political activities from 1917 through 1934. to Mani Bhavan, uh, although the world over this is known as Gandhi's home, this was just a transit home for Bapu, right from the 1920s, this belonged to a very prosperous jeweler uh, of Mumbai who was a very close friend of uh, Bapu. So whenever uh, Bapu was passing through uh, Mumbai, uh, he would say here, yeah, because Mumbai was the international port. So uh, going abroad would have to be from here. And uh, two significant events that happened from here was that the first uh, non-cooperation movement was launched uh, from this house in uh, 1920. And the final push for independence in 1942, the Quit India movement, uh, was also launched from this house. Uh, there is a public uh, meeting place just down the road, uh, which was known as the Gowalia Tank. The meeting was to be held over there. The Congress's uh, convention was held over there, where the Quit India resolution was adopted. The next day there was going to be a public meeting, but at midnight on that day, post midnight on that day, the British government swooped down on this house and arrested the entire leadership. So in the morning, uh, when everybody woke up to uh, attend uh, the public meeting, there was no leadership. Yeah. The British thought that if they caught and uh, incarcerated the leadership, the movement would fizzle out. But Bapu had prepared the Indians and, and had told them that uh, freedom was their own responsibility, the individual responsibility of every Indian. And so they would have to fight for it individually. And uh, so that is what happened, uh, that the people, by and large, took it to heart and said, now we will fight, no matter if we have leaders or not, we will fight the British to the very end. And that is what finally uh, made the British realize that uh, their days in India were over. And that is where five years later, they uh, handed over the power to the Indians and then. So this is the significance of uh, this house, Bani Bhavan. But for Americans uh, and Westerners, there is another great, great uh, significance of this house. In 19, uh, I think it was either 59 or 60, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was invited to India by the government of India and he was declared the guest of the government of India, or honored guest of the government of India. He was taken on a tour of all of India. And uh, when he landed in Mumbai, he made a request that I want to go and visit Gandhi's home first before I do anything else. So he was, from the airport, he was brought here directly. And you know the room upstairs, the one with the glass partitions, uh, that room has been kept the same way as it used to be in Bapu's time. Everything else has been rewatered and changed to become a museum and a library. But that room has been kept the way it used to be when Bapu lived in there. So uh, Dr. King requested the director of this museum to open the door so that we could walk in and sit by the, you know, there was a mattress kept uh, where Bapu used to sit in York and that the Dr. King said he wanted to uh, meditate. And so they allowed him to go in and he said he wanted to be left alone. He sat down on the floor next to that mattress and uh, everybody uh, left him. And then the hours passed by, Dr. King didn't get up. So when it was time to close down the museum, 
the director went and whispered to Dr. King and said, I think you must lean down because uh, we have to close the meeting. And Dr. King turned around to the person and said, uh, I want to stay here. So I don't want to be here. Dr. King, the arrangements had been made for his Amrutaj to stay at the Taj Mahal Hotel, which is the most luxurious hotel in Mumbai. And he booked the presidential suite for him and his wife. They said, but you want to go there and stay? He said, no, I want to stay in all these homes. There was no facility in India for staying. It was a museum. So they needed me. He said, just give me a bed sheet and uh, you know, put it on this floor and uh, I want to still sleep over here. Finally, uh, there was a small stone room which they emptied out the back of this house and uh, converted it into a small bedroom. And for the three days that Dr. King uh, stayed in Mumbai, he would go out every day to do his uh, duty, the formal program Every evening he would come back here and he would stay. He would go and sit in uh, the room where Baku is in and then sleep over here. And when he left, he wrote in the guest book. He said, I have been in communion with Baku for the past three uh, days and I felt his aura embrace me. And now my I feel charged up to go back and work for the nights of my people in the US. There was an aftermath to that incident in sometime in, uh, I think, uh, 2006 or 2007, I was invited to London uh, as a part of the Black History Celebration of the big Hong celebration in August. In uh, the mayor of London had invited me uh, and we had invited the uh, December uh, descendants of uh, five or six of the famous historic bicycles to be there. And Dr. King's daughter was at that function. And when I narrated the story in my talk, she came up to me and said, you know, at that time I was a young girl and it was the most terrifying period of my life. I said, why not happen? He said, when my father came back from India, we could see that he was a changed person. And he said, every time that the family sat down for dinner, my father would talk about Gandhi and his influence on him. And he said, the most terrifying thing was that he would keep telling us that I also want to embrace poverty like Gandhi because I want to become a leader. <laughs> and so we must give up all these creature comforts that we enjoy and live uh, the life of an ascetic like Gandhi. And he said, she said, as children, we kept thinking that one fine day that was going to grab us by our hands and say, okay, we're leaving this house and going and living in the streets. And so that terrified me. <laughs> Uh, the thing is that even though he was so removed from Dr. King, they had never physically met. His, uh, Dr. King's uh, knowledge of Gandhi was the read books that he had read. But this is the kind of connect that he had. And so Gandhi, although he never visited the US, has left an indelible impression on uh, the American history which even President Obama alluded to when he uh, became the president. So this is the house, the culprit of what <laughs> happened to them. So that I think was something that you, uh, you should know about. What year was that? I think either 1959 or 60. One of those. I am not exactly sure which year it was, but 59 or 60. Mm -hmm. And so, this is it about Bani Pravan. The next stop was to visit the Women's India Trust, Panvel, an organization that started training less privileged and unskilled women in Mumbai to stitch sari petticoats. Today the Women's India Trust has grown to provide women educational opportunities vocational skills training, 
and employment. This visit gave us the opportunity to see traditional crafting such as block printing and sharing a meal with some of the women. When they are uh, when they are printing, when they keep the screen on the table, it just cannot be kept anywhere. It has to fit into those hollows. There's a certain measurement. The hollows are there. It has to come onto the design where the color has to fall onto it. They make it on the computer, so computerized positives are made and then the uh, thing is given for making of the screen. And uh, in screen printing, when you have, you know, for like same in block also, you have, it's like a little thing where it's very delicate, the screen, it has pores in it. So they can be a single color. So the designs can be of one single color. They can be a design of two colors. So if it's two colors, it has two screens. If it's three colors, you have three screens. If it's four, you have four screens. So it depends on every color in the, the design. So for example, now they're showing. So they have done the outline first of the single color. And now they're doing the second color. It will be, it will look this way. So you have to click pictures if you want.
When our time at the Women's India Trust was over we travelled on to Kolhapur where the group arrived very late and checked into the Sayaji Hotel Kolhapur. In the morning on day 4, the group travelled out to see various migrant worker camps, such as visiting a brickyard and sugarcane sites, or to learn about issues pertaining to child labour. In conjunction with this visit, we met representatives from Avani, the anti-child labour program and residential school, to tour both makeshift tent schools as well as the residential school where dozens of children have been removed from work sites and or vulnerable positions and now not only attend governmental schools, but also are provided with food, accommodations, and health support through the organization. We also met with Avani founder Anuradha Bhosle, a renowned grassroots women's rights and anti-child labor activist, a former child laborer herself. She has spent the past 20 plus years fighting for the prevention of child exploitation, child labor, human trafficking, and female infanticide. Tushar, why you can translate? Yeah, I will do that. Taking towards working at the brickland so they could uh, supplement the family's income. The only thing they could do is go here. When you watch this brickland operation, it is see the earth mounds over there. The mixture is kneaded by hand. So what you they do is, if it was in production, all the mix would be brought together in mounds like that, mixed with water, and one person would tramp in it to knead it into the dough. Then it would be molded and sun-dried, like this. Once it was sun-dried enough, it would be piled up into heaps like that, and a fire would be started in the belly of that heap, and uh, the bricks would get roasted yep. in, in that. So at every stage, it required to be transported. They have to warn cities like, hey, the guys are burning.
The child symbolizes the children and the rural agrarian society around. So this project is intended to benefit the children and the neighboring community of farmers. So this is that part of it. You see all the farm implements and farm uh, farmers using those on the door over here. And here you see the children learning sustainable agriculture practices in this mural. So they, this is. Anuradha's fertile imagination of what she intends to do over here and if you ask Brian if you ask Brian he'll vouch for what this place was when he last came here and what it is the difference that has been made today I don't think he was able to recognize the place uh, when he saw it he asked me what is this and I said guess what Uh... <laughs> 
left the hotel in Kolhapur en route to Pune for a visit at the Gakhand Palace which is a national monument of India's freedom movement. The palace is of particular importance since it served as the location of imprisonment for Gandhi, his wife Kasturba, and his secretary Mahadev Bhai Desai following the launch of the 1942 Quit India movement. Both Kasturba and Mahadev Bhai passed away during their captivity here. As such a memorial to both are found on the grounds. In the evening, the group was transported to the Pune railway station and boarded the overnight train Nadi Duranto to Ahmedabad. The coolie or train porter in his bright red shirt and copper armband has been ubiquitous at Indian railway stations ferrying luggage to and from trains. Tuesday, day 6, upon arrival at the Ahmedabad station, we were transferred to the Fortune Landmark Hotel for breakfast. 
We then departed for Rajkot where we visited the Mahatma Gandhi Museum, also known as the Alfred High School where Gandhi completed his graduation in 1887, and the Kaba Gandhi no Delo which served as the Gandhi's primary family home in India until 1915. After these visits, we checked into Fortune JPS Grand Hotel for an overnight stay. On Wednesday day 7, once again, we left very early in the morning to visit the birthplace of Mahatma Gandhi at Kirti Mandir in Porbandar, and then returned to Rajput for another night stay at the Fortune JPS Grand Hotel. Kirti Mandir is a small museum at the birthplace of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi in the city of Porbandar, Gujarat, India, memorializing him and his wife, Kasturba Gandhi. First stop today was to visit the Khamir, which was instituted after the earthquake of 2001, and focuses on strengthening and promoting the rich artisanal traditions of the Kutch district. The name Khamir is an acronym for Kutch Heritage, Art, Music, Information, and Resources. Additionally, Khamir means intrinsic pride in the local language of Kutchi, 
and to ferment in Hindi. This organization serves as a platform for the promotion of traditional handicrafts and allied cultural practices. The process is involved in their creation and the preservation of culture, community, and local environments. Primary form of livelihood for them in their family units, and for them it's something that really works because, uh, as an organization, uh, raw material for spinning the cotton is this process is get delivered. The yarn gets collected. They get paid in their own homes, and you facilitate that entire interaction. They're able to work on their homes and have income. <laughs> In their own hands, in their own control, that you know, they don't have to ask from anyone or get from anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge, it's not a huge sum of money also, but it's enough that they can. Uh, it's a sizable amount of money as an addition to the family income also, and as the disposable income for one person. Mm -hmm. The second in the caste hierarchy is uh, that uh, in this area we are known as darbar. Darbar means court. Those who were held court. And they uh, by tradition enforce strict parda system for their women. So the women are not supposed to uh, step out of the house and uncover themselves or fit their faces <coughs> as far as possible. And so it was essential that uh, whatever vocation they could do had to be done in their, house, in their homes. So come in and this color for them. Uh, Initiative and they traditionally because they had a lot of time, they would be spinning the charka or pounding spices or things like that at so home. That traditional occupation has been continued now and then given a commercial twist by the so the design he is going to make now is chom it's called Chomuk in this uh, from this area. Chomuk means four faces. And uh, there, there used to be a king in this region before independence. And uh, his capital was guarded by a very big gate. And a guard would be standing on top of the gate 24-7 and uh, he would keep a watch on all four in all four directions to ensure that there was no uh, danger uh, or attack coming and so that position was called chomuk because he faced all four directions and the of the he's not creating just one of the he's creating three प्लास्टिक करो छो प्लास्टिक रिसाइकलिंग प्रोजेक्ट इनिशिएटेड बाय खमीर एंड दिस इज ऑल मेड फ्रॉम वेस्ट प्लास्टिक दैट दे रिसाइकल एंड दे वीव इट अगेन इन टू मेक इट इन क्लॉथ लाइक दैट एंड एन प्रोडक्ट लाइक दैट With this, I have a personal association because my daughter Kasturi worked with Khamir uh, a few years back for about a year and a half, and her first assignment was to make a training film, a documentary on this plastic recycling uh, uh, project that Khamir had initiated. So this design that he is working on is called the Bela print. technique uh, which is uh, a, a unique way where they use rice and red red mud curd <coughs> 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 
वो ब्लॉक करने के लिए क्या करते हैं सो मिलेट फ्लावर एंड स्टार्च एंड सॉइल इज यूज टू ब्लॉक द पार्ट्स विच डोंट मस्ट नॉट गेट द डाई फॉर द क्लॉथ सो देन देर बी अ वाइट पैच लेफ्ट आउट लाइक दैट वन देर एंड देन ऑन टॉप ऑफ इट द रेड प्रिंट विल बी प्रिंटेड एंड देन द क्लॉथ विल बी डाइड in the color that is required so this is how these are the stages through which the product goes before it ends up with the indigo dyed final product We then took the tour bus to Hunar Shala, an organization that shares its knowledge and skills for building designs, settlement planning, social housing, disaster reconstruction, wastewater treatment systems, infrastructure development, and more. The impetus for its collaborations and associations grew after the 2001 earthquake that devastated the Kutch region. Late that evening, we checked into the Dafan Residency Bhuj for an overnight stay. ત્યાંથી કામ લાવીને અહીંયા બનાવીને મોકલી આપો એવો વિચાર કરવો કારણ કે પારકા દેશમાં જઈને રહેવું હોય એટલે માથા કૂટો બહુ જ આપણને On Friday morning we left Bud for Mundra to visit Vikalp Sangam salt workers who travel and live in simple conditions the vikalp sangam is a school for the salt workers children where students from all over gujarat stay and study after the visit we returned to ahmedabad where we checked into the fortune landmark ahmedabad hotel thank you very much uh, welcome to all uh, this is the his name is dharmendra 
and he is the person who has started this initiative of educating uh, the children of fisher folks and uh, salt pan workers in this region. He is associated, he's a fellow of an organization that is based out of Mumbai called the Yusuf Mehrali Center. And so he runs their satellite uh, center over here. We'll talk about that later on. Dharmendra will tell us about his work over here. This is the first time I am visiting this work, so I'm as uh, no, unaware of what is happening as all of you. Dharmendra ji, you tell me. Please. Caters to the children of migrant workers who come uh, in search of uh, occupation to this place because Mundra is a very big port on the western shores of uh, India. One of India's first private ports run by a company called Adani, who is India's biggest oligarch at present. Uh, so they, it, they have children from 18 states of India, including children from uh, Nepal. They are all being taught in this school. Started the school, he did not have any establishment or place. So this is the tree under which the first classroom was started. After that, they got the use of two tenements like this. So they started uh, classes in those tenements. Then they, the number of students grew, so they had classes under eight trees. Eight classes under eight trees. Then this person who is a philanthropist of this area, Chandrakant Gogri, he came, Sangeeta invited him to come and see their work. And we, when he saw that work, he said, I'm going to provide you with a school building. So he bought this property and he has told them that as long as they run the school, they can have the use of this property. So they have their school over here and they also have their administrative office over here. So now they have a better place to work in. But during the lockdown, once again, up uh, was full of school Pura lockdown. During the lockdown, he all again, once again went out into the grounds and had open air schools. Okay, school because of the lockdown, they could not come to the school. So they were concerned that uh, with such a long break, the children would uh, forget what they had heard. So they went out into the locations of the, where the population was and started school rooms over there. And they also, during the lockdown, provided uh, rations, food rations to the families so that they could sustain themselves. From their families. Their fathers are contract laborers, so whenever uh, factories and other establishments in this city require laborers, they have labor contractors, so they would say, okay, we want 50 laborers or 100 laborers, and from the villages they would bring. <coughs> Initially, only the fathers would come and leave their families behind because there was no infrastructure for their, to support their families. But when they came to know that now their children will have schools, so now the whole family has come here and the children get admission. Now the problem, again the same problem as in Avni, they did not have any documentation about birth certificates mm. or uh, education certificates or nothing of that sort. So Dharmendra and his wife, they uh, get them their, uh, what is the uh, equivalent of your social security card, they get them that, they get them uh, as much according to their age, they classify them into the schools and put them in classes and they get Hindi medium education because most of them come from the original Hindi states, Hindi speaking states. So they get educated in Hindi and when they go back, when their father's contracts get over and they have to go back again, they give them, provide them with transfer certificates so that when they go back, they have a documentation saying that they have studied in this grade or class in a school and get admission in equivalent classes back at home. So that is the kind of service all these first generation learners from their families are getting.
तो ये पुनीता मैडम है ये बिहार की है ये इसमें अलग अलग स्टेट के कितने कितने स्टेट के बिहार के कितने बच्चे हैं ठीक है यूपी के कितने उत्तर प्रदेश के कितने हैं नेपाल के कितने हैं और अलग तो अलग अलग स्टेट के बच्चे हैं जो उत्तर भारत में ही ज्यादा हाँ सर हिंदी भाषी ही है सर सो मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस क्लास आर फ्रॉम द स्टेट ऑफ बिहार देर आर सम फ्रॉम यूपी एंड सम फ्रॉम नेपाल ऑल्सो बट ऑल ऑफ देम आर फ्रॉम द हिंदी स्पीकिंग क्लासेज द टीचर इज फ्रॉम बिहार ऑल्सो सो शी टीचर्स देम इन द लैंग्वेज दे आर मोस्ट ऑफ देम अंडरस्टैंड और जब पेड़ के नीचे शुरू किए थे उस समय से ये टीचर she was she has been teaching from the time the school was run from under a tree yeah yeah aapko kuch sar ke bare mein bolna hai sar ko jaate hain aap log kon hai sir batao kon hai dur se unko dekh naam kya hai jante ho yes sir ghar mein ghar jinne bataya isliye jaate hain to yahan अच्छा लगता है ना भी कह सकते हो ऐसा नहीं है कि हाँ ही कहना चाहिए क्या अच्छा लगता है पढ़ाई पसंद आती है अंग्रेजी पढ़ते हो अच्छा इसमें से कई जो है वो प्राध्यापक है और कई जो है वो स्टूडेंट है अभी भी ये सारे अमेरिका और इंग्लैंड और फ्रांस से आए हुए सर फोटो निकाल सकते हैं हाँ जरूर निकाल शी सर आपका नाम बताओ नेपाल से नेपाल से यशोदा इज फ्रॉम नेपाल एंड शी सेज आई एम फीलिंग वेरी हैप्पी दैट पीपल फ्रॉम फॉरेन कंट्रीज हैव कम टू माय स्कूल एंड आर कम्युनिकेटिंग विद मी सो शी सेज थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर एवरीवन ये हमारे स्कूल की सबसे होशियार बच्ची सबसे इज द क्लेवरेस्ट गर्ल इन दिस स्कूल टू फाइट्स फॉर द ट्रूथ यस गुड अच्छा बच्चों के अधिकार के लिए जरूरत है फिर और कोई कुछ बोलेगा एक्टिव है बोलो सर मैंने पहली बार ऑर्डर्स लेने के लिए ये तो बोल दो सर कुछ She is fascinated because she has seen foreigners for the first time. क्या लड़के कुछ बताएंगे कि नहीं कि लड़कियाँ ही बात करेंगी? कोई लड़का बोलेगा मेरे साथ? लड़का लोग सब बुढ़बा करते हैं रे। आसना में जो लोग करते हैं उनके लिए बहुत बड़े पैमाने पे काम करते हैं। जैसे ये गाँव जाएंगे तो इक्कीस जनरल की शादी और ये सब हो जाती है लेकिन आठवीं तक हम लोग इस बार ट्राई कर रहे हैं कि हमको आठवीं नौवीं दसवीं ग्यारहवीं बारहवीं इसका मानता मिल जाए ताकि ये बच्चे को हमको छोड़ना नहीं पड़े सो दीज आर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ दी एट्थ ग्रेड दे हैव गवर्नमेंट हैज परमिटेड देम टू हैव क्लासेस ओनली इन दी एट्थ ग्रेड सो मोस्ट ऑफ दीज स्टूडेंट्स विल हैव टू गो टू फाइंड अदर स्कूल्स टू डू देयर सीनियर स्कूल नाइन्थ टेंथ इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ But what will happen is most of these students will drop out after the age because uh, they have to go far and their parents can't afford to send them. So Narendra is trying to get approval from the state government to extend the school till the 12th grade. But at present, this will be their final year in school, and most of them, most of the girls, will be taken back to their villages and will be married off. Their education will. Be
that is where the real work is happening. Right? So I was very keen that we all come and see these kind of initiatives because although he is backed by an institution, most of what he has achieved over here is because of his own dedication and his own determination to do something good and worthwhile for the people. Him, his wife, and the entire team that is, uh, he has assembled over here are making, they, they become the agents of change that Babu always talked about. So these are the small initiatives that bring home for the people who otherwise have no hope in life. And that is, there can be nothing more than, them than this kind of work. Because I, I believe that when you talk about Bapu and his ideas, there is nothing insignificant. So what in, in gets cancelled, everything becomes significant. And so this is also a very significant step. It's not, you don't have to go to the moon to make a significant step for mankind. You do it on earth itself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
dust so that they do not inhale by mistake any insects as they talk or breathe. On Saturday, our first day back in Ahmedabad, we spent the day with the SEWA Self-Employed Women's Association. SEWA is a women's trade union which was registered in 1972 for the organization of poor, self-employed women workers. Since these women earn a living through their own labor or small businesses, they do not obtain regular salaried employment with welfare benefits like those workers in the organized labor sector. As such, these women are representative of the 93% of the unprotected labor force workers in India. Members of SEVA gave us a tour of the property and shared some of their stories with us. They have, uh, they have a membership of 2 million women now uh, in all the seven, seven, uh, uh, Sattar district. 14 districts of the state, 14 states of this country and 7 countries of the world. <laughs> So, uh, Jignya Saben is going to stop because she gave you the general idea about the parent organization Seva. Now, Niru Ben, who is the who is part of the Vanalakshmi uh, Ganesh Pura uh, group, which does this project, will tell us about uh, this project and how it started and what they are doing now. Namaste Vadani. 
But they would be given work only for 10 to 15 days in the whole agricultural season because the women were considered not good enough laborers. <laughs> And uh, food uh, security uh, and work occupation. So Seva women, uh, the volunteers asked them, do you have some common land belonging to the village? Uh, and uh, the women said, yes, there are some uh, grazing lands that belong to the panchayat. Panchayat is the local government body of the village. But they said, if we go and ask for that land, the uh, panchayat will never give it to us. So then Seva said, okay, let's all together work for it. The panchayat, that, uh, you know, the land that is lying waste will become productive. Why don't you give it to the women? And finally, in 1987, Satyashi ke Satyash. So in 1987, this 10 acre plot of land where we are sitting, uh, the panchayat gave to the women on a 30 year lease. So uh, that's how this, the, this project began with a 30 year lease on a completely barren wasteland. The first thing that uh, Seva taught, trained these women of Ganeshpura was to start a nursery for uh, plants because the objective of this plot was to reforest it. It was a barren piece of land, but there was no irrigation over here, so no watering facilities. So they went to the Nandanpura uh, village, Nanda, Nanda Sad, Nanda Sad village in the neighborhood where there was a forest, <coughs> the forest department had their establishment there. So they would go there every morning with their tiffins and uh, they started creating a nursery where they uh, plant uh, grew about 200,000 saplings. So, uh, Seva taught them about how to fill soil and fertilizer in small uh, uh, plastic bags and then plant uh, seeds of uh, trees and nurture them to the sapling level. So, they got a contract with the forest department to provide them with 200,000 uh, saplings. But every day when they walked from Ganeshpura to Nandasan, they used to pass by many uh, villages and hamlets and men in villages and hamlets they sit at the border of the village on the road and they, they used to tease the women who used to go to work and warn them they said look if you don't grow uh, the uh, contracted number of uh, saplings for the forest department 
the forest department will come and seize your homes and take away your uh, uh, roofing tiles and doors and windows and everything. So be very careful. But the women said, we, as it is, we don't have anything. So we'll do this and show prove you wrong. So they kept working at it. 200,000 saplings for uh, the forest department. It is a six months project. So the first installment is paid by the forest department so that they can buy the polythene bags. The soil and fertilizer, of course, is available from the forest department. So the first thing they would do is fill the uh, uh, bags with the fertilizer and soil mixture. Then, uh, so the next installment they would give is for the seeds and for the water supply for the transplanted those saplings over here. But the problem was there was no water to irrigate. So, you know, the village that we drove through, yeah. about one and a half kilometers away, <coughs> women used to carry water on their heads in pots and in cans and things and come twice or thrice a day to water their plants over here. And that is how they nurtured and grew all these trees that we are enjoying the shade of uh, 35 years ago. They would pay per uh, hour of uh, pumping of water. And they used to have, uh, uh, they, they dug some sinkholes on their plot and they would pump out water and fill up that sinkhole. And but when they went for uh, broke for lunch, by the time they came back, the land was so porous that all the water would be absorbed by the land. And so much of the water that they were buying was going waste. So then uh, Seva decided that they would uh, start a rainwater <coughs> harvesting project over here. So the members of this group were sent to Baroda which is a city close by uh, where the IPCL, Indian, Indian Petrochemicals uh, Limited Company, ran a course in rainwater harvesting of how to uh, dig uh, ponds and then line them with plastic so that the rainwater would not seep into the ground and be trapped on the surface. And so the uh, women of Seva, they dug a pond over here which was thus who? Thus who? 10 feet uh, deep and its circumference was such that they started harvesting <coughs> and storing almost 200,000 litres of rainwater on that and that's how slowly their uh, water requirement, uh, their organisation, they were made fun of and uh, the men would say, you know, you can't even write your own name, how are you going to run uh, association and there, you know, there can't be an association for women and things like that. So the women told them that look if we can bring up children and take care of families and grow crops and grow trees and nurture them, why can't we do an association? And so finally they formed their uh, cooperative association. Finally after almost two and a half years, uh, Tariq Kaita? 11 July 1991. On 11 July 1991 they finally formed their cooperative society and it got registered. they started growing uh, uh, crops over here, Seva taught them about food <coughs> processing. So they started uh, kind of making products out of their agricultural produce. So they have limes and lemons growing over here. So they made pickles and uh, squashes, uh, uh, concentrates, uh, 
out of uh, lime and uh, uh, there is a berry called amla so they make make uh, candied uh, amla berry which is dried and sugar coated and it, it's a lovely uh, mouth freshener and digestive to have so various such products are made over here they grow tomatoes a lot of tomatoes over here and uh, vegetables there and many fruits so they make pickles and jams and all those kind of products also oh, sorry yeah. so they have divided the plots in this thin like a plot of land amongst the members and every 3 years they draw lots and whichever weapon uh, picks up a, a chit and whichever plot is uh, in that chit that is uh, that uh, she starts uh, managing that plot the seed fertilizer water and everything that is required is given by seva and uh, the member gets kitla bhag So two parts of the produce goes to the association of women, and one part of the produce goes to the individual. That is how it is divided. But above, from those two parts of the association, also all members get a share. So there is an increment in that way also. The association was formed. The, there were hardly three members who had studied for. I had gone to school for three years, three grades. But all the members of this association have ensured that their children study as much as they want. And there are women in this association. The, the women of this association never moved out of their homes. They wouldn't even think of going to Ahmedabad, which is hardly about 50 kilometers away. from here but they have members who have visited new york italy sri lanka uh, the far east and have gone all over even alone and gone and talked at women's conventions and big uh, uh, international uh, meetings amara pasra mila seva khet majur association ma 65000 beno nu sanghathan che खेती खेती कामदार पशुपालन खेत मजूरी छूटक मजूरी सभ्य संकल्प फार्म लेबरर्स कैजुअल लेबरर्स एंड त्रीजो को एंड एनिमल हर्डर्स एंड डेरी ऑपरेटर थ्री हंड्रेड विलेजेस इन दिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट सेवा ना सभ्यों हमारा पहले 200 सभ्यों एक प्रतिनिधि था अत्यारा हमारे 500 सभ्यों एक प्रतिनिधि थे ये हमारा 45 प्रतिनिधि बैठा सो दे हैव 45 रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स ऑफ देयर एसोसिएशंस इन दिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट हु रिप्रेजेंट 500 मेंबर्स ईच एंड दे हैव अ मिडवाइव्स एसोसिएशन एंड दे हैव अ लेबरर्स एसोसिएशन आल्सो and nine members of the middle of wild wives association and pehla na kela pistols 45 of the uh, uh, laborers union and each 65000 mujhe sanghathan karu 65000 members in their ena pratinidhi pistol so for all over the land yeah from 45 representatives of the in the district of the 65000 members of the association dakla tarike ganesh Uh, where, so they they have been working as you asked. Uh, they have been working on the environment uh, issue also, and uh, they assembled solar lights and solar fans as a part of their activity of manufacturing. But they basically work with uh, farming, uh, with food production, with uh, healthcare, with savings groups, and. now a major thrust in uh, dealing with climate change and its effect on rural communities so uh, they realized that you know the villages in the interiors did not have electricity and so they used to have a lot of problems in uh, 
commuting, taking their children to school and bringing them back and uh, irrigation and everything. So they had to carry uh, gasoline lights with them in the evening and that used to add to the expenses of the family. So they decided that they would invest in solar electricity production in units that uh, were self-contained. So they did uh, assembly of uh, solar uh, lighting and solar fans and solar pumps. Not for chatting but for work because they used to interact with the headquarters for uh, finding out about the agricultural prices and prices of fertilizer and seeds and things. So they also provided phone charging units along with the lights and fans so that uh, the women could charge up their communication devices easily. The older generation was willing to do physical labor much easily, but the younger generation, the new generation, uh, who has been equipped with education and things, is very reluctant to follow in the footsteps of their mothers and uh, elders and do the same kind of hard labor. So, But since the objective of associations like this one, Ganesh Pura, is agriculture and things, so their challenge is <coughs> how to encourage the new generation mm -hmm. to continue this work mm -hmm. because they, they consider it as a backward kind of uh, work, uh, not glamorous enough uh, for them and so that for them is a very big challenge, how to continue this effort further is a very big challenge. They're trying to find solutions for it. The present generation and the future, uh, the younger lot in the thing, and holds uh, seminars and workshops in the villages where all these three are addressed and are given training in uh, farm economics, farm uh, science, and uh, modern farming uh, techniques. And <coughs> are taught about the the benefit of farming over uh, industrial jobs or office work and that way also they try to motivate the future generations <coughs> to continue with the farming <laughs> એટલે એ રોજગારી ઉપર જે અસર પડી ને એ આખો એક આમ ચેલેન્જીસ ને દાખલો આમ જળ હરતો છે એમાંથી ઘણા બધા સભ્યોમાં પરિવર્તન પણ આવ્યું ફોર ધેટ ધે હેવ વિચ સેલ્સ ઓલ ધીઝ પ્રોડ્યુસ હા આર યુ ડી આઈ રૂડી રૂડી વિશે થોડું કે છે હા રૂડી ની વાત કરો પ્રવીણ આ જે ટામેટા નું કીધું ને તે એવી રીતે આપણે રૂડી અંતર્ગત કમલાના જે નાસ્તા બનાવવાનું છે created an app called Mera Bins, which is an accounting app for the rural uh, women and it keeps accounts of day-to-day -day expenses and income and at the end of the month or whenever they wish they can automatically generate a analysis report of their uh, finances of their business and uh, these kind of uh, modernization uh, that seva is bringing in it also makes the activity uh, more uh, acceptable for the younger generation and it also helps them because seva helps them get the young uh, small traders and small manufacturers to get loans and financial assistance and uh, marketing assistance and all that. So they are using a lot of technology to make it attractive for the younger generation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The criteria is that she should be from the laborer community. Uh, she should be uh, employable. She should be uh, from the poorer segment of society and uh, she should be willing to be self-employed. <coughs> Those are the criteria by which they accept members.
happening to tradition children once their zodiac signs are uh, ascertained by drawing this chart they will be given the zodiac sign and the letters associated with that sign and most of them would have names starting from those letters i don't because with the my parents didn't know what zodiac sign i was born under ah. so they just named me the favorite name that they had decided <laughs> but when many of them have according to the zodiac sign so they have made association with uh, the trees and uh, these are the trees associated with the various sun signs <laughs> and uh, things so you can find your birth tree over here and they say that if you go and sit under that tree and confess to all your crimes they will, you will be absolved <laughs> On Sunday we visited the Sabarmati Ashram an ashram founded in 1917 and served as one of the main centers of the Indian freedom struggle named after the holy river Sabarmati upon which it is situated this site no longer functions as a working ashram but rather as a museum and an institution whose aim is to preserve and propagate the legacy of the Mahatma In the evening we were transferred to the Jaipur airport where we flew to Jaipur. On arrival in Jaipur, we were transferred to the Ramada Hotel Jaipur and had a late supper. On Monday, our first day in Jaipur, we visited Jaipur Rugs, a family business with 4 decades of craftsmanship that revolutionized the carpet industry by working directly with artisans to empower them and their communities in realizing sustainable livelihoods. Its founder NK Chaudhary is called the Gandhi of the carpet industry and has treated all his artisans, considered untouchables, with respect. He has been quoted as saying, "Let goodness, fairness and most importantly, love prevail in business." profits will inevitably follow Later that day we went to Jaipur Foot Bhagwan Mahavir Viklang Sahayuta Samiti organization Jaipur Foot is the world's largest organization dedicated to rehabilitating individuals with disabilities over 1.55 million 
health services include the fitting and provision of free artificial limbs and other aids to amputees and polio patients. The services are not only provided to individuals across India, but also extended to those in 27 countries around the world. After breakfast on Tuesday, the group departed for Delhi. The distance between Jaipur to Delhi is 272.9 km and can take between 4 and a half hours to over 6 hours depending on traffic. We made a stop on our way to Delhi at a village with Jaipur rugs looms. We toured the village and had lunch with the villagers. <laughs> This is Manpura Machiri. This is one of the villages of Jaipur Rag, which is the pioneering villages. That's why it's closer to the city. And here we have more than 150 artisans, women artisans. And this entire village is led by our queen, Shanti Devi. She is the person who is a Bunkar Sakhi. So in Jaipur Rag, we have Bunkar Sakhi. Bunkar means the Weaver, right? And Sakhi means the friend. Sakhi is your friend. So the job profile is Bunkar Sakhi, in which she becomes a friend of all the community's ladies who she will be helping in their day to day work and also the personal life. Because a friend doesn't remain a work friend, right? They become your friend. So we'll be meeting her in later in the day. And today, now I'll explain you first how. The loom is made and what things happen to the loom, the technical part of it. And you can ask any questions anytime, you can interrupt. So, this is how a loom looks like. This entire... Guys, guys, let's one down. Closer. <laughs> Alright. So, he hello everyone.
We made it to Delhi in time for dinner, so we immediately checked into the Pride Hotel New Delhi Aerocity. No trip to India would be complete without a ride on a tuk-tuk. We rode one to the chemist, and then back to the hotel. The total cost was under 2 US dollars. <laughs>
Yes. We started day 14 with a visit to the Gandhi Smriti, part of the old Birla house. This is a sacred place as it is where Mahatma Gandhi's epic life ended on January 30, 1948. His last 144 days of his life were spent here, and thereby contain many treasured memories including the room where Mahatma Gandhi lived as well as the prayer ground where he held a mass congregation every evening. It was the prayer grounds where Gandhiji was felt by an assassin's bullet. Next the group visited the Rajghat where Mahatma Gandhi was cremated and houses the memorial to the father of the nation. While here we participated in the Flame of Hope ceremony. The Flame of Hope was lit with prayers at the Pope's Mass in Japan. Then it was blessed by the Dalai Lama. The next part of the journey was to the Eternal Flame of Mahatma Gandhi at Rajghat. The Eternal Flame represents Gandhi's teachings of non-violence, tolerance, and ethical values, which on this day was used to rekindle the flame of hope.
Our last visit for the day was to the National Gandhi Museum which contains a rich collection of original relics, books, journals, exhibition, memorabilia and more. It is also developing into a resource center for both Gandhian and allied studies and research. Some of us opted to spend their last day in India at Agra with a visit to the Taj Mahal. Built by the great Mughal Emperor Shah Zehan in honor of his beloved wife Mumtaz Mahal, the Taj Mahal is one of the great wonders of the world. Thank you for joining us on this magical journey. Together we explored several cities and villages to see firsthand how people have used Gandhi's philosophy in everyday life. It is no longer a secret that official India had abandoned Gandhi's philosophy upon gaining independence. However, there are many at the grassroots level, young and old, who are still inspired by his philosophy and have put it into action to bring about a qualitative change in the Indian society.